Gabriel, just the sound of my king's voice stirred my heart. I left my post at the entryway and stepped into the throne room. To my left was the desk on which sat the book of life. Ahead of me was the throne of God Almighty. I entered the circle of unceasing light, folded my wings before me to cover my face and knelt before him. Yes, my lord. You have served the kingdom well. You are a noble messenger. Never have you flinched in duty. Never have you flagged in zeal. I bowed my head, basking in the words. Whatever you ask, I'll do a thousand times over, my king, I promised. Oh, that I have no doubt, dear messenger. His voice assumed a solemnity I'd never heard him use. But your greatest work lies ahead of you. Your next assignment is to carry a gift to earth. Behold, I lifted my eyes to see a necklace, a clear vial on a golden chain dangling from his extended hand. My father spoke earnestly. Though empty, though empty, this vial will soon contain my greatest gift. Place it around your neck. I was about to take it when a raspy voice interrupted me. And what treasure will you send to earth this time? My back stiffened at the irreverent tone and my stomach turned at the sudden stench. Such foul odour could come from only one being. I drew my sword and turned to do battle with Lucifer. The father's hand on my shoulder stopped me. Oh, worry not, Gabriel. He will do no harm. I stepped back and stared at God's enemy. He was completely covered. A black cassock hung over his skeletal frame, hiding his body and arms and hooding his face. The feet protruding beneath the robe were thrice-toed and clawed. The skin on his hands was that of a snake. The talons extended from his fingers. He pulled his cape further over his face as a shield against the light but the brightness still pained him. Seeking relief, he turned toward me. I caught a glimpse of a scullish face within the cowl. What are you staring at, Gabriel? He sneered. Are you that glad to see me? I had no words for this fallen angel. Both what I saw and what I remembered left me speechless. I remembered him before the rebellion, poised proudly at the vanguard of our force, Wings wide, holding forth a radiant sword. He had inspired us to do the same. Who could refuse him? The sight of his velvet hair and coal black eyes had far outstripped the beauty of any celestial king, a celestial being. Any being, of course, except our creator. No one compared Lucifer to God, except Lucifer. How he came to think he was worthy of the same worship as God, God, only God knows. All I knew was that I had not seen Satan since the rebellion. And what I saw now rep repulsed me. I searched for just a hint of his former splendor, but saw none. Your news must be urgent, spat Satan to God, still unable to bear the light. My father's response was a pronouncement. The time has come for the second gift. The frame beneath the cape bounced stiffly as Lucifer chuckled. <laughs> the second gift, hey? <laughs> I hope it works better than the first. You're disappointed with the first? asked the father. Oh, quite the contrary. I've delighted in it. Lifting a bony finger, he spelled a word in the air. C-H-O-I-C-E. You gave Adam his choice, Satan scoffed. And what a choice he made. He chose me. Ever since the fruit was plucked from the tree in the garden, I have held your children captive. They fell fast, hard. They are mine. You have failed. <laughs> oh, you speak so confidently, replied the father, astounding me with his, with his patience. Lucifer stepped forward. 
his cloak dragging behind him. Of course, I thwart everything you do. You soften hearts, I harden them. You teach truth, I shadow it. You offer joy, I steal it. He pivoted and paraded around the room, boasting of his deeds. The betrayal of Joseph by his brothers, I did that. Moses banished to the desert after killing the Egyptian, I did that. David watching Bathsheba bathe, that was me. You must admit, my work has been crafty. Crafty, perhaps. But effective, no. I know what you will do, even before you do it. I used the betrayal of Joseph to deliver my people from famine. Your banishment of Moses became his wilderness training, and yes, David did commit adultery with Bathsheba, but he repented of his sin, and thousands have been inspired by his example and found what he found, unending grace. Your deceptions have only served as platforms for my mercy. You are still my servant, Satan. When will you learn? Your feeble attempts to disturb my work only enable my work. Every act you have intended for evil, I have used for good. Satan began to growl, a throaty, guttural, angry growl, softly at first, then louder until the room was filled with a roar that must have quaked the foundations of hell. But the king was not bothered. Feeling ill? Lucifer lurked around the room, breathing loudly, searching for words to say and a shadow from which to say them. He finally found the words, but never the shadow. Show me, O king of light. Show me one person on the earth who always does right and obeys your will. Dare you ask? You, need, you know there need be only be one perfect one, only one sinless one, to die for all the others. I know your plans, and you have failed. No Messiah will come from your people. There is no one who is sinless, not one. He turned his back to the desk and began naming the children. Not Moses, not Abraham, not Lot, not Rebecca, not Elijah. The father stood up from his throne, releasing a wave of holy light so intense that Lucifer staggered backward and fell. Those are my children, you mock. God's voice boomed. You think you know much, fallen angel, but you know little. Your mind dwells in the valley of self. Your eyes see no further than your needs. The king walked over and reached for the book. He turned it toward Lucifer and commanded, Come, deceiver, read the name of the one who will call your bluff. Read the name of the one who will storm your gates. Satan rose slowly off his haunches like a wary wolf. He walked a wide circle toward the desk until he stood before the volume and read the word. Emmanuel, he muttered to himself, then spoke in a tone of disbelief. God with us? For the first time, the hooded head turned squarely toward the face of the father. No, not even you would do that. Not even you would go so far. <laughs> You've never believed me, Satan. But Emmanuel, the plan is bizarre. You don't know what it is like on earth. You don't know how dark I've made it. It's putrid. It's evil. It's... It is mine, proclaimed the king, and I will reclaim what is mine. I will become flesh. I will feel what my creatures feel. I will see what they see. But what of their sin? I will bring mercy. What of their death? I will bring life. Satan stood speechless. God spoke. I love my children. Love does not take away the beloved's freedom. 
but love takes away fear. And Emmanuel will leave behind a tribe of fearless children. They will not fear you or your hell. Satan stepped back at the thought. His retort was childish. But they, they will too. I will take away all sin. I will take away death. Without sin and without death, you will have no power. Around and around in a circle, Satan paced, clenching and unclenching his wiry fingers. When he finally stopped, he asked a question that even I was thinking. Why? Why would you do this? The father's voice was deep and soft. Because I love them. The two stood facing each other. Neither spoke. The extremes of the universe were before me. God robed in light, each thread glowing. Satan canopied in evil, the very fabric of his robe seeming to crawl. Peace, contrasting panic. Wisdom, confronting foolishness. One able to rescue, the other anxious to condemn. I have reflected much on what happened next. Though I have re relived the moment countless times, I am stunned as I was at first. Never in my wildest thoughts did I think my king would do what he did. Had he demanded Satan's departure, who would have questioned? Had he taken Satan's life, who would have grieved? Had he called me to attack, I would have been willing, but God did none of these. From the circle of light came his extended hand. From his throne came an honest invitation. Will you surrender? Will you return to me? I do not know the thoughts of Satan, but I believe that for a fleeting second the evil heart softened. The head cocked slightly, as if amazed at such an offer would be made. But then it yanked itself erect. Where will we battle, he challenged. The father sighed at the dark angel's resistance. On a hill called Calvary. If you make it that far, Satan smirked, spinning and marching out the entryway. I watched as his spiny wings extended and he soared into the heavenlies. The father stood motionless for a moment then turned back to the book. Opening to the final chapter, he slowly read words I had never heard. No sentences, just words, saying each, then pausing. Jesus, nail, cross, blood, tomb, life. He motioned toward me. And I responded, kneeling again before him, handing me the necklace, he expl explained. This vial will contain the essence of myself, a seed to be placed in the womb of a young girl. Her name is Mary. She lives among my chosen people. The fruit of the seed is the Son of God. Take it to her. But how will I know her, I asked. Oh, don't worry, you will. I could not comprehend God's plan, but my understanding was not essential. My obedience was. I lowered my head, and he draped the chain around my neck. Amazingly, the vial was no longer empty. It glowed with light. Jesus, tell her to call my son Jesus. How thrilling had been our send-off. Michael the Archangel read to us the words from the Book of Courage. The troops sang to the Father, begging his spirit to accompany our battalion. The Father rose from his throne in a flood of cascading light and gave us words of strength. To the angels he urged, Be strong, my ministers. To me he reminded, Gabriel, Satan desires to destroy the seed as much as you desire to deliver it. But fear not, 
I am with you. Thy will be done, I resolved, and took my place at the apex of the troops. It was time to leave. I began the song of praise to de signal our departure. One by one, the angels joined me in worship and sang. One final time, I faced the light. We turned and plunged into the heavenlies. On the wave of his light, we flew. On the crest of our songs, we soared. Paragon was at my right, Aegeus on my left, both handpicked by our father to guide, to guard the vile, ever able, ever nimble, ever obedient. So immense was our number that I could not see its end. Our strength knew no bounds. We flew as a torrent of stars through the universe. I at the helm, thousands of angels behind me. I delighted in a backward glance at the flood of silver wings, rising and falling in silent rhythm. From them came a constant flow of spontaneous praise. To God be all glory! Only he is worthy. Mighty is the King of kings and Lord of lords. The battle belongs to God. I had chosen only the most able angels for my company, for only the most able could face the foe. Every angel had been willing, but only the most skilled warriors had been chosen. We passed the galaxy of Ebon, into the constellation of Emenes. Out of the corner of my eye I caught a glimpse of Exelon, a planet ringed once for every child found faithful to the Father. Through the constellation of Clarion and into the stellar circle of Darius, around my neck dangled the glowing pile, its mystery still beyond my understanding. Behind me I heard the soft voice of Sophio, the Father has gifted him with wisdom, and I have taken him on many journeys. His task is always the same. Whisper truth to me as we fly, I tell him, and so he does. Lucifer is the father of lies. There is no truth, no truth in him. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. As my courage mounted, so did my speed. We knew we would not fail, but we had no idea that the battle would come so soon. Only moments across the ridge of time, Paragon shouted, Prepare yourselves! Suddenly I was entangled in an invisible net. Row after row of angels tumbled in upon me. Even the final rank was moving too fast to avoid the trap. Within moments we were a ball of confusion. Wings flapping against wings, angels bumping into angels. Before we could draw our swords, our attackers drew the net so tight we couldn't move. From within the fray, I could hear them mocking us. Were you all the best of heaven? Ha! <laughs> to the pit with you! Now you will face the true master, they taunted. But their celebration was premature. The king had prepared me for this web of evil. I knew exactly what to do. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, I shouted. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, Almighty. Over and over I praised our master. My angels heard me and joined the worship. Weakened by the words of truth, the hell hounds released the ropes, allowing us to break free. The Lord loves those who praise him. Sophio shouted in triumph. Liberated, we brandished our swords of light, each connecting with the next, forming a seamless ball of brilliance. Blinded, the demons crashed into each other and then scrambled to escape. I dispatched a platoon to pursue them. Make sure they don't return, I instructed. I studied their flanks, first one side, then the other. No losses. The attack had only increased our resolve. I began to sing, and we resumed our journey, bathed in the light of our swords and the music of our adoration. We passed the golden planet, signifying our entrance into the chosen galaxy. 
Each of us knows well these stars. We frequent them on missions. Despite our fond memories of these constellations, we did not pause. Our mission was too vital. Gabriel, it was Paragon calling my name. Behold, in the distance, I had never seen such a demon. His jackal-like head sat on a long, scaly neck and dragon body. His wings stretched so wide they could engulf a dozen of my fighters. Each of his four feet appeared strong enough to crush an angel. Who is he? I asked Paragon and Aegeus. It was Sophia who answered. It is Fluma. Fluma? It couldn't be. Before the rebellion, he was our chief singer and most noble fighter. He would often fly ahead of us, suspended on a graceful rising and falling of lustrous wings. Many of the songs I now sing I'd first heard from the lips of Fluma. Now look at him, I thought. What happened to the sterling eyes and white robe? What happened to the countenance of joy? As I drew near, the repugnant smell of evil caused me to wince. I readied my sword, expecting an attack. I did not expect a question. My friend, how long has it been? The voice was as warm as an archdemon can feign. Oh, not long enough, child of hell. I shouted in his face as I saw it past. I didn't trust myself to stop. I didn't trust my emotions or my strength. I kept moving, but immediately he was next to me. Gabriel, you must listen to me. Your prince is a liar and the father of lies. But my prince has changed, Fluma argued. I did not slow down. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Aegeus and Paragon flying wide-eyed with their hands on their swords, awaiting my command. I prayed that they wouldn't see the concern in my eyes. If Fluma had retained one-tenth of his strength, he would destroy an entire battalion before I could respond. He had been the mightiest in our class. Fluma continued, A miracle has occurred since you left on your mission. My master witnessed your utter defeat of our forces. He is disturbed by your strength and his weakness. He is equally perplexed by the offer of mercy which came in the throne room. He says you were there, Gabriel. Did you see it? Though I didn't respond, the image of God's extended hand came to mind. I thought of the tilted head and remembered at my first impressions. Could it be that Satan's heart indeed had softened? Emotion accompanied Fluma's plea. Come, Gabriel, talk with Prince Lucifer. Plead with him on the Father's behalf. Speak of your master's love. He will listen to you. Let us go together and urge him to repent. Fluma accelerated ahead of me and stopped, forcing me to do the same. He towered above me. I thought I'd prepared for everything, but I, this I never expected. I prayed for direction. Together, Gabriel, you and I together again, the, de the dragon continued. It can happen. We can be united. Satan's heart, heart is ripe. Already mine is changed. Suddenly it hit me. Again I knew what to do. I silently thanked God for his guidance. Your heart has changed, has it, Bloomer? His huge head nodded up and down. I turned to Paragon and Aegeus. The fear on their faces was giving away to, was giving way to curiosity. You long to join our ranks, do you? Yes, Gabriel, I do. The rebellion was a mistake. Come with me. We will reason with Lucifer. I long to return to heaven. I long to know my former splendor. <clears throat> By now my plan was clear. Wonderful news, Fluma. I sensed the surprise on the faces of my angels. Our God is a good God, I announced. Slow to anger and quick to forgive. Surely he has heard your confession. 
I paused and elevated closer to his face and looked into his eyes. Let us then lift our voices together in praise. Fear flashed across Fluina's face. Sofio perceived my strategy, announced the truth. You must worship the Lord your God. But, but I don't remember any of the words. Realising Fluina's true intent, my soldiers began to circle him. I moved then closer and spoke firmly. Surely you are willing to worship our master. Surely you haven't forgotten the songs of worship. Open your mouth and confess the name of the Lord. Fluma looked in to the right and the left, but he saw no escape. Join us, I dared. If your heart is truly changed, worship with us. I pulled out my sword. If not, prepare to fight us. Fluma knew he'd been foiled. His mouth could not, would not praise the almighty God. His heart belonged to Satan. He swung his neck to one side, preparing to sweep us into the next galaxy. Had we only our strength, he would have succeeded. The collective might of our troops could not have resisted his, resisted his force. But we were empowered from on high and endured with God's strength. We pounced on the demon in a second. Before he had a chance to attack, his leathery skin was invaded by swords of light. It melted like wax. What little flesh still clung to his bones was instantly blotched and infected. Froth fell from his jaws. He opened his mouth and howled, a cry as lonely as the skies have heard. Kill me, he begged his voice now husky. He knew any death we gave him would be gracious in comparison to the punishment which awaited him from the hands of Lucifer. The angels are kept in bonds for judgment, I reminded him. Only the Father can kill the Eternal. With a twist of our swords we cast this demon of death into the abyss. For an instant I saw sorrowful for his, I was sorrowful for this creature, but the sorrow was brief as I remembered how quickly he had followed the prince and his false promises. I lifted my voice in praise both for our victory and my salvation. I could not help but think of the prophecy the Father spoke to me. As much as we seek to bring the seed, so Satan seeks to destroy it. Lifting hands heavenward, we proclaimed his name above all names as we resumed our journey. Soon we came into the Earth's solar system. I lifted my head as a signal for the army to slow down. The atmosphere of terror surrounded us. And I searched for the tiny strip of land inhabited by the promised people. Oh, how precious is this globe to him, I thought. Other orbs are larger, others grander, but none so suited for Adam and his children. And now the hour of the delivery was at hand. Below me was the small town where God's chosen one slept. I see you have made it safely. It was the voice I dreaded. Instantly, he was before us. We had no option but to stop. You are wearing your old uniform, Lucifer, I accused. The true angels were entranced at his appearance, as was I. Was this the same devil who had repulsed me in the throne room? His hoarse whisper was now a vibrant baritone. The skeletal figure, now robust and statuesque, next to his light, our whiteness was grey and dirty. Next to his voice, our voices were but a whimper. We raised our swords, but they flickered like candles against the sun. My battalions looked upon the devil in confusion. Before the send-off, Michael had tried to warn them. But no words prepare you for Lucifer. 
Without speaking a word, he enchants. Without lifting a weapon, he disarms. Without a touch, he seduces. Angels have been known to follow him without any resistance. But I have the words of the Father in my heart. He has been a liar since the beginning. The devil looked at me with a soft smile. Gabriel, Gabriel, how many times have I spoken your name? My servants can tell you. I have followed you through the years. You are one loyal angel, and now your loyalty is rewarded. The mission of missions. He threw back his head and laughed. Not an evil laugh, but a godlike one. How well he imitates the king. Oh, it's no imitation, he said, as if he could read my mind. It's genuine. I rejoice that you have passed our test. My face betrayed my perplexity. Has he not informed you, my friend? How wise is our heavenly father? How gracious that he should allow me the privilege of telling you. This has been a trial of your loyalty. Your whole mission was a test. The day of sorrows, the heavenly rebellion, the falling of angels, my visit to the throne room, the net, Fluma, all of that was to test you, to train you. And now, O oh Gabriel, the king and I congratulate you. You have proven faithful. I thought I knew every scheme of Lucifer, every misdeed, every lie. I thought I had anticipated each possible move. I was wrong. This one I never imagined. Oh, is he sly. He sounded so sincere. Do you honestly think I could rebel against God? He implored. The father of truth, why I love him. His grand voice choked with emotion. He created me, he gave me free will. And all this time I have worshipped him from afar so that you could be tested. And now my friend, you have passed the father's test. Why else would he allow you to witness my visit to heaven? It was all a staged event. God's magnum opus to test your dedication. His words tugged at my breast. My sword drooped to one side and my shield to the other. My thoughts swam. What is this I feel? What is this power? I know he is evil, yet I find myself weakening. I at once long to love and kill him, to trust and deny him. I turned to look at Aegeus and Paragon. They too had dropped their weapons, their faces softening as they began to believe the words the deceiver spoke. Behind them, our armies were relaxing. One by one, the swords were dimming. Incredible, with only a few words, Lucifer could harness legions. Is this really true? He looks and sounds so much like the father. All of us were beginning to fall under his control. All that is except one. In the distance I saw Sophia. His eyes were not on Lucifer. He was looking heavenward. I could hear his declaration mounting in volume at each phrase. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Sophio's prayer was a beam into the sky. With my eyes, I followed the shaft of light. At its end, I could see my father standing. One glimpse of his glory and my confusion cleared. I snapped erect and repositioned my shield. Lucifer, for the first time, saw Sophio praying. His smile vanished, then he forced it to return. He spoke faster, but the true rasp of his voice was returning. Oh, the father awaits us, Gabriel. Let us smash the vial in celebration of the father's victory. Let us return with joy. Your mission is complete. You will be rewarded with a throne like mine. You will be like God. If Satan had any chance, he just lost it. Liar, I defied. I have heard those words before. I have heard that promise. It is a lie, and you are the father of lies. You stink. 
you buzzard, to hell with you. Though I knew my sword would not stop Lucifer, I still I unsheathed my weapon. Almighty God, save us, I prayed. He did. My sword projected a light far greater than ever before, a light so bright that Lucifer covered his eyes and released a deluge of curses. I turned to my angels. They were again alert and poised, the spell broken and their courage restored. They lifted their swords in defiance. The ever-increasing light illuminated the devil, revealing what I had seen in the throne room. Only now his hood lay back, the skullish face violated the sky. I drove my light into the devil's heart. As I did, Aegeus did the same from the other side. Satan screamed, writhing in pain as our lights fused in purging heat. From within him scampered the ogres of a thousand miseries. Loneliness, anger, fear. In one final desperate attempt, Lucifer twisted toward me and lunged at heaven's vial. He never had a chance. Paragon's sword swept out of the sky, severing Satan's hand from his arm, sending it spiralling into the night. A wave of stench forced us to lift our shields before our faces. Satan threw back his head, his visage contorted in pain. The voice which only moments before had charmed, now hissed. I'll be back, Lucifer swore, I'll be back. Sophio shook his head in disgust. Disguised as an angel of light, he said softly. As quickly as he had appeared, Satan was gone, and we erupted in praise. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, King of kings and Lord of lords. As the Father received our praise, he whispered to me. I heard him, as if at my side. Go, Gabriel. Go and tell Mary. On a wave of worship, I flew, this time alone. I circled through the clouds and over the ground. Below me was the city where Mary was born. The Father was right. I knew her in an instant. Her heart had no shadow. Her soul was as pure as any I've seen. I made the final descent. Mary. I kept my voice low so as not to startle her. She turned but saw nothing. Then I realised I was invisible to her. I waved my wings before my body and incarnated. She covered her face at the light and shrank into the protection of the doorway. Don't be afraid, I urged. The minute I spoke, she looked up toward the sky. Again, I was amazed. I praised my father for his wisdom. Her heart is so flawless, so willing. Greetings, God be with you. Her eyes widened and she turned as if to run. Mary, you have nothing to fear. You have found favor with God. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. Though she was listening, she was puzzled. But how? I've never slept with a man. Before I spoke, I looked up into the heavens. The father was standing, giving me his blessing. I continued, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, therefore the child will you bring into the world will be called Holy, Son of God. Nothing you see is impossible with God. Mary looked at me, then up into the sky. For a long time she gazed into the blueness, so long that I too looked up. Did she see the angels? Did the heavens open? I do not know. 
but I do know when I looked back at her, she was smiling. Yes, I see it all now. I am the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. As she spoke, a light appeared in her womb. I glanced at the vial. It was empty. <laughs>